Hello everyone and welcome to another video with me on Berets talking about a new game today. Uh, Near Reincarnation, a brand new game that has just come out made by Applebot and uh, in collaboration with the, the Near development team, uh, this is a, a, a new gacha game uh, coming out for the mobile phones. Currently it is only out for Japan. I do believe that it is supposed to come out for global at some point in the future, but uh, I'm here to talk a little bit about my thoughts from having played a, a little bit of it. I haven't played a ton uh, in since it's only basically been out for roughly about 24 hours now, but I do have a little bit of experience. But before we start talking about it, Quick note about why you're not seeing it being run here. Um, as far as I know right now, uh, it doesn't run on any particular emulator that I am aware of. I, I know that it runs a little bit okay on LD, but uh, it does experience crashes, whereas it apparently runs fine audio-wise on Bluestacks, but... Uh, blue stacks uh, just can't load visuals so there's something going on there and it's going to take a little bit to find out exactly what's going on but here it is as you can see i'm currently running it on my uh, poco phone uh, here and uh, it runs pretty darn smoothly for the most part there's a few issues with it but uh, i really wanted to kind of talk about this brand new game and uh, what in general I think is composed as opposed to some other games I play and whether or not I think this game is going to last or not. You know, because I'm so good at predicting this stuff. Jokes aside though, uh, I did end up taking some screenshots of the game and I'm going to be showing those screenshots off here. I'm going to make them just a little bit bigger for the sake of this video. I would like to do... Uh, some video recording in the future if people are interested in knowing more um, But for now just kind of take a peek at the screenshots and what's going on So first of all near I have to say is probably one of the more painful gotchas I've ever tried to play in terms of re-rolling uh, the beginning of the game uh, is very very slow and it does take a little bit a lot of the current of the uh, game that you're actually doing is wandering through really kind of big hallways. I mean, the game looks impressive in terms of its environments in terms of scale, uh, but they're re but the environments are mostly empty and mostly just mass corridors. For anybody who wants to know a reference to what I'm talking about, think about Final Fantasy 13 or later parts of Final Fantasy 15, where basically the entire game was just you're you're in this very long hallway kind of thing many many times over so uh it is it is one of those games that i think uh you're you at, for the first little bit i was impressed with you know how big some of the environments look but it really just makes them feel empty and it does make wandering through them feel pretty darn slow in terms of like the general flow of the game uh, while there is a centralized hub, which essentially looks like this, once you have access to it, you're basically wandering through each of these areas, and each of the areas are a kind of story. Like, each level consists of about eight or ten missions, and going through them is kind of like going through a miniature story. There is the main... The bigger story when you're into the main area of the game, which focuses on our uh, main character, you know, having to do with reincarnation, it has to do seemingly with uh, some of these side stories. Like here in this screenshot, you can see this is the battle areas essentially take you into these little story vignettes that you go through. You have like a story section and then you have the battle section and the battle sections are themed as to what's going on so a couple of areas there's like a samurai style feudal japan area there's also a um like an old west style style area so there's a couple of things like that in the game so overall the main flow of the game seems fine if you're in if you're okay with kind of a little bit slower more atmosphere um 
the general flow of the game is pretty darn simple. It's just kind of run to the next part. There isn't any diverging paths that uh, I've seen yet, and I'm not convinced that there will be in the future. So that is something that is important. In terms of battle uh, system, it is basically plays like uh, Princess Connect, actually, uh, which is a game I've talked about recently. Basically, your character's uh, gauges end up filling up, and uh, you kind of choose when they are going to attack. You can also put it on auto and just let the game take care of itself. However, for the most part, timing your abilities is kind of important in terms of getting the most out of the game because when you when you are timing your abilities uh if you are familiar with final fantasy brave exvius uh, or uh brave frontier this game does incorporate the idea of chains and chaining the more successfully you chain stuff the more damage you will dish out the faster enemies will die and other than that in terms of like blocking and dodging all of that stuff is automatic in the game, and the game takes care of it, and it depends on your characters and the quality of your characters, but it is to be noted that, for the most part, combat is essentially on rails, and you have a couple of abilities that can be used, potentially a um, pod, if you've played the near games, which I'm assuming you have. You, each character in those games has what's called a pod, kind of a floating device that follows them around and offers support, you can have those in this game, but you can have a little customizability. And um, that does bring us into the next part of uh, talking about this game, which is equipment. And uh, I guess we also are going to need to talk about the gotcha, but this game really is at heart a weapon gotcha. As you can see here from my weapon screen and the gotcha screen that's currently on the slideshow, um, weapons are a major part of this game, um, but more so in the fact of the elemental aspect, because in this game, elements do seem important. Um, the first few levels that I've been playing on the JP side, each level has had a elemental weakness to it, and elements, uh, taking advantage of those elements, uh, does make your attacks uh, considerably stronger. If you are not going to use the elements, you can get, uh, and your power level isn't like pretty pretty good. Um, there is a significant decrease in your uh, abilities of actually defeating enemies. So that is really important in terms of the characters you actually end up getting. Um, well, your characters are essentially broken down into like weapon types um i in the sense that they kind of some of the equipment some of the uh, stuff to power up their skills or abilities or whatnot requires specific things but um for the most part element is decided by weapon as far as i can tell in as well as defense still early days so i'm not 100 percent sure on that but um when you go in to look at a character I mean, you have your level up screen where you are able to level up and improve the character's stats and whatnot. Um, but in terms of making a party, I'm just going to tap into a quest very quickly. Your equipment on the screen, uh, you can actually just equip different elemental weapons to do different types of types of damaging attacks and whatnot. Um, characters, in, in terms of like the upgrading of your characters, basically everything can be upgraded from what I can tell. Your pod can be upgraded, your weapons can be upgraded, your characters can be upgraded, their abilities can be upgraded, and there is a fair amount of just stuff in this game in terms of like items where there's multiple types of things that uh, increase the EXP of your characters. Some work better with some characters, some work better with, you know, other, um, other characters. So that is important. But of course, this is a gotcha game and um, did not make this the longest video. This is kind of just a, a little bit of an impression so far. 
in terms of gotcha resources, the game is, I'd say, fairly generous for being through the first four worlds. I've done probably about nine multis so far, which is a pretty decent for a gotcha game in terms of rerolls. Uh, I think it's very slow, so it, it essentially disincentivizes it by having a kind of art style open that just really is very slow to play through. But in terms of the gotcha, as you can see here on the screen, gotcha rates are as posted, two stars, three stars, and four stars, uh, with a separation in terms of three stars and four star rarities. So the rarity for a four star collectively is, is 5%, and what should be noted is that in this gotcha, it is primarily a weapon-based gotcha throughout, as in, in the sense that you are pulling weapons and pulling weapons only. However, certain weapons come with characters, and this is the one of the biggest concerns I have in the game. Characters range from essentially two star to three star to effectively four star. On this screen, you can see there, there is A2 um, from near Automata, which is uh, attached to that one specific weapon. So if you draw that one specific weapon, you get the four star copy of her. And the four star is the best you can get right now. Um, as far as I can tell from uh, experience in the game, there is no way for two star characters to be upgraded into three stars, and there's no way for three stars to be upgraded into four stars. And there is no five star, there is no six star, but it, it could happen in the future. Uh, taking a look at that, um, the premium version of the characters is gotten through the gotcha. Right now there is a near automata collaboration going on that is going on until the end of March, which does speak to the event life cycle as being quite long. Which what's kind of what is really interesting is the fact that the event shop actually does have three star versions of 2b 9s and a2 with a weaker version of their weapon as well meaning that there is a wave in this game for you to get essentially a free version of the characters you like so far um but they are going to be less powerful and that brings me to talking about the fact that a uh it's only effectively a 2% chance of getting a character with a weapon. It's 3% to get a character, or just the we uh, four star weapon. There are plenty of four star weapons that do not have a character attached to them. So that is something here you can see a gotcha results screen. And that kind of leads me into talking about four stars in terms of quality, two stars versus three stars and four stars in terms of combat here. Even at considerably lower levels, four stars are immensely as powerful, if not more powerful. When I ended up getting um, my account's only four star character, which is A2, you can... there she is, uh, she has been night and day different from a three star where a three star is hitting for around 2000 points of damage hers are 6000 to 10000 points of damage with a high quality weapon as well even putting a high quality weapon on a lower tier like a three star or a two star character was just not anywhere near as powerful like um four stars are a pretty darn big power jump two stars seem to die fairly quickly not in not insanely quickly but enough that it's a bit of concern and and this was the thing that i was experiencing when i was starting to play whereas there were certain points where uh, the game demands that you have, that you um, level up, that you make your equipment better because there are power spikes and difficulty spikes. Even looking at the near Automata event, going from normal, which requires a 10,000 power level, which is, mm, I'm about almost 15k power level right now. Uh, the 10k power level for the beginning one on normal then jumps to 20k for intermediate and even higher for the very difficult version. So the game does seem to 
like four star characters are definitely a big advantage i would say that they are a bigger advantage right now their stats seem are higher but it, it seems like enough that it makes a considerable difference that it's I, I don't think that necessarily you could just run three star characters in this game again still pretty early to make a, a definitive judgment call but at this point i don't know if i'd be really excited to um not have a account with a four star character because uh, the difficulty does seem to ramp up fast and one of the things that's made it uh considerably easier going through the story even the story missions right now is having a2 she is just insanely powerful and steamrolly over the enemies now in terms of purchasing in this game for people who are wondering how expensive it can be 10,000 lapis essentially gets you this right here 10,000 currency each multiple is approximately three or is three thousand currency sorry um but the packs also come with a little bit of extra stuff that can potentially help you with growing characters um i have not made any purchases and i really don't intend to make purchases at this point because i'm really uncertain about the longevity of this game given the what i feel is a pretty big um power differential between four stars and three stars it could mean that the game is really difficult and um to keep up with because you also need to think well what are at what point am i going to need all four star fire weapons and what point am i going to need different characters how quickly are characters going to be power crept and everything so yeah i i i do think that um overall i'm, I'm just going to kind of wrap this up because i don't want this to be the longest of videos in terms of visuals, uh, there is some nice scale on the 3D environments, but they feel pretty lifeless, empty, hollow, and almost to the point of meaningless. To the point where, yeah, it's nice to see some scale and everything, but if, if you just leave these environments fairly empty... Now, with that being said, some of the environments have had interesting story elements with, like, hinting at massive things in the distance that are potentially dead... And that is cool, and there are some cool things done with the camera, but it, it doesn't change the fact that it, it's a lot of, um, like, the areas are big and pretty devoid of content. And you're essentially just running down a hallway, and I don't think that's good. Um, in terms of gameplay... I mean, if, you, if you're fine with Princess Connect, you'll be fine with combat here. It's a little more complicated. There is some strategy involved in the chaining and when to use abilities and what characters to bring and what characters to use. Some characters are more defensive and supportive from what I've seen, with 2B and 9S looking to be a little bit more defensive characters, whereas A2 seems to be just strict offense from uh, my early testing and impressions. Um... So the gameplay is essentially a fairly good thing. I do think that the difficulty is ramping up a little bit faster than I can potentially handle. And it could just be because I don't know the best places to get all of the upgrading equipment. So there's even like an item gotcha. And those items vary in terms of like improving your skills or improving your character's level. Like there's a lot of different stuff in the game. To unpack and unfortunately without being able to really show a ton of stuff um, for right now it's a little frustrating to say the least in terms of music uh, you're listening to some of the music right now uh, near uh, reincarnation has essentially thematically uh, beautiful near music I know that everybody really likes near music it's pretty darn good always uh, in all of the games and I, I, I so far I do like it it's one of the soundtracks that I probably like more in a gacha game. Uh, it's not perfect, but I do think it's great. In terms of the gacha itself, this is one of my biggest concerns. Because, first of all, there are four types of elemental weapons. There are different types of weapons too. Swords, spears, fists, guns. And I'm, I'm just curious about how good each of those things are are respectively and when they will need to be used and when they will not need to be used and about kind of chaining these elements and how how difficult really the content's going to be to the point where 
three stars and two stars won't cut it anymore. Again, I hit a pretty brick wall, pretty big brick wall against a fairly early boss character where uh, I was just decimated. And then after getting uh, A2 and leveling her even a tiny bit um, to the point where she was 15 levels under my other characters, I was able to clear the content with ease. So I, I, I do think that there is a definitive advantage to getting four stars and that does make me concerned that this game um could power creep these characters could it just kind of really make two stars and three stars non-viable and in terms of the cost of the game it's not as expensive but it's still pretty expensive i don't think that the uh two per the five even the fi the fact that you you know have a five percent chance of getting a four-star weapon, essentially, although 2% with a character, really outdoes the fact that you potentially maybe need three versions of the weapons, and you have to level all of those weapons, and you have to improve all of this stuff, and it, it just might be a little bit too much. And so, I, I'm, I'm going to... I like near. If, if you want to know my overall impressions, I like near reincarnation enough to keep trying it for a little bit longer um it has some nice atmosphere -y elements where it, it, it's kind of one of those games i just like to lay in bed listen to the soundtrack and kind of just go through uh, a more environmental area and just get into some battles and whatnot but it really depends how quickly it scales and how i feel the equipment system and how much upgrading needs to be constantly being done because if there's a ton of micromanagement in terms of the systems and everything it could get a, a little bit frustrating or potentially just a little bit too much to handle but as you can see 80 percent of your drops are going to be um two star and two star doesn't feel like it it, it definitely doesn't feel like it's going to cut it at all so yeah this is near um, reincarnation, brand new game out. Hopefully, I'll be able to get it working for an emulator soon. Uh, do some streams on it, do some content on it. Uh, overall, though, I, I think in terms of in terms of like a near mobile game, it's it's okay for what it is. Am I saying that it's the best thing ever? That I'm in absolute love with it? No, but I I, I, I can get behind the combat system. And it hasn't costed me anything, so I'll, I'll, I'll play it for a little bit longer and do a an, another version of what I think a little bit later, potentially after a week and whatnot. So anyway, that's all for this video. No, I talked for a long time about my thoughts and everything, but um, if you're interested, you can definitely download it. But uh, do know that if you have a unstable VPN connection, well... The game's not going to be super happy with you. Anyway, so thank you very much for watching. Take care and uh, see you in the near future. There you go. Finally made it fun.